Hi, welcome to uh, Calculus 3, Partial Derivatives. On um, topic of Partial Derivative uh, Assignment Practice uh, Series. So today, this video, we're going to practice some problems on the unit about the partial derivative. And uh, this is our assignment number three worksheets. And uh, we work on the partial derivative and uh, what is the meaning of those uh, partial derivatives. OK, so now let's go to our worksheets and take a look at what type of the problems we have here right? and how to solve them. OK, so here, here we go. I'm going to work uh, probably five or six problems here. And uh, so the first ones here, let's take a look at this ones here, right? So it says here, so they give you this graph. They want to see the f of x, one, two. So remember, right, when we talk about the f of x, one, two, that means we are in the what? So we want to find the rate of the change along the what? Along the x-axis, right? So the way you look here, this is x, this is a positive axis, right? And this is a positive y here. Okay, so the, the graph here, they, they kind of the marked, you know, they marked, the, so this is the one and this is another point, right? So let's say, okay, so let's take a look at this ones here, see what do we have here? So let's say if I am at the y and the twos, right? So I'm moving along the x direction. So that means I'm going here, right? So you will see what happens here. My rate is going to what? If you're moving this point along the x direction, so you see you're getting bigger and bigger, right? So I know this one's here will give me the positive. Okay, so for the let's take a look at the f y one two here so let me see here if i'm moving along the x directions y directions here right so what did you see here you see the value because here's half like a kind of the slope type of things going down so i know this one's here will give you what a negative number so it's a negative rate of the change now let's take a look for this point this is negative one and the two Okay, so when you move along the x-axis, right? So here you move along the x-axis. So see here, you from here, you drop to here, right? So what happened here? This will be the negative. So let's take a look at the same way. This point here, you're moving along the y-axis. What happened? You, you kind of the drop off. Here it seems like there's a curve going, like a cliff going down, right? So this one will give you the negative as well. Okay, so that is how do we read the graph and decide. So remember, right, the partial derivative of x and the partial derivative of y is the what? Is the rate of the change of x and y so along the x-axis, along the y-axis here. Okay, so now let's take a look at this ones here. Different people might get the different answer. So let's say, let's try to estimate the function of f of x at 2, 1. So let's first locate our value 2, 1. So this is 1, 2, 3. So x is 2 and y is 1. So it's somewhere here, right? So in here, so when we talk about f of x 2, 1, right? So that means f of x 2, 1. That means you move along the what? Along the x-axis, right? So you kind of... Uh, you move uh, like this way, right? You move along the x-axis here, right? So in here, you will see it's kind of like, a, so it's between the 10 and the 12. So you, you move from the 10 to 12, right? So you say it's a 12 minus 10. So the rate of the chain. So how much between the level curve of 10 and the 12? Well, somewhere, well, it's about 0.6, okay? So you will say the rate of the change is 2 over 0.6, right? So the same way, let's say the f of the y, the two ones, right? f of the y, the two one, that means that you are starting at this point, you move up here, right? So you move up, then the here, oh, so they, they get rid of my color. Uh, so move up here, right? So here, and then, 
the rate of the change is here, as you see here, right? So it's from change from what? It's kind of you touch the age, right? So it will be like an A minus 10. Now, how much is this one you move up? Ah, uh, it's probably it's a point nine, right? So the move, the rate of change for y direction is negative. Okay, so I be careful, I don't write the double negative here. Okay, so the rate of the change of the y will be negative two over point nine. Of course, here like point nine, point six. That's just how I eyeball the data, right? And the different people, you might get a little bit different. Uh, so like a, for this problem, different people might get a different answers here. Okay, so then the next problem I want to, okay, so the next problem I want to do is, uh, um, okay, so I want to do number 29 here, okay, so the, this one's here, let me give us some, a little bit more space. So probably give the number 29, give it more space here, okay. Okay, so the, so in here, in order to do number 29, right? So the, you know, you have the integrations here and uh, now, you want to take the partial derivatives, right? So let's see the f of x here. So the f of x, right? So in here, do you remember what is the, you know, the, the formula or theory we use? This is what we call is the fundamental theories of calculus, right? So you integrate all the way to here to x right so you in the way all the way to x now you take the derivative what that will be will just be because you integrate the negative derivative will just be what the function what is there the function itself right so you will be say this is a cosine right so you will have a cosine what e to the what e to the x here right Okay, and uh, now, like it's here, the next one's here, right? So you just place uh, whatever you have, uh, you know, for your cosine functions here. So now you take a look at the f of y here. So the f of y is on the buttons, right? So in order to apply the fundamental theory of the calculus, I need to switch it. So if I switch the x and the y by the fundamental theory of calculus, I need to what? I need to add a, a negative sign in front of it, right? And then now you say f of y, then you'll be able to apply the fundamental theory of the calculus again. So this will be the cosine, what? You just plug it in e to the what? e to the y here, right? Okay, so this one is pretty easy, basically. So the, this one's here, you need to know, we call this the fundamental theory of calculus, right? That's what we use it. And then the other problem I'm going to work on is will be the number 43 here. So this one's here is really, it's nothing too special. And it's kind of like, I, the reason why I want to work on is just try to, use this uh, as a kind of the review for what you learn, you know, in the calculus one. So in here, I'm going to find uh, f of y, right? That means I need to take the derivative. And uh, so if you remember, you know, like uh, in the calculus one, we say in order to simplify it, instead of just to take the derivative of this, let's try to break it this way. So because natural log have a good characteristic, if you divide it, what it will be? It will be u what? u minus natural log, right? So u minus two natural log. So this is one plus x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So this will simplify your, you know, the derivative. So now if I want to find the f of y, so what I need to do the natural log, you put everything, in the denominator, so this is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, right? 
then you chain rules, right? So you chain rule, this will be one half, right? So you will be one half and then the negative square roots of uh, negative one, one half minus one become negative one half. So it becomes square roots here, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, right? Then because the negative is here, so you have what? You have a negative and then the chain rule inside all right, so the negative two y's here. So the same way is here is so this one's here. You take the natural log everything in the denominator, then you chain rule that. So you chain rule the so square roots of this will be one half. And then the here this is x squared plus y squared plus z squared the square roots, and then chain rule the true y's here, right? So the chain rule true y's here. So then you can substitute. Uh, you can like cancel, cancel the true and make it uh, a little bit uh, easier. And then you just plug the number one two two, right? So you plug the number one two two in there. So this will be the negative two. So one two two. So one square plus two square. So it will what? It will be three, right? So one minus three is negative two times three. Then you minus this one one two two minus two. So this is one plus three. So it's four times three. All right. So then if you can get it, it's one over six here. Okay, so the, then the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to do the inflation, you know, number 47 here, kind of try to review what is the implicit differentiations, right? So that we talk about implicit differentiations here. So I want to find the rho z rho x, right? So if I find the rho z rho x, that means I'm taking the derivative of x and z. But every time you touch the z, you need to have rho zero x. So here I have a two x and two y. Y is a constant, so it's a zero. So then this is, you take the derivative of three to the z squared, what I have six z's, right? But every time I do the z, what I need to do, rho z, rho x, then the one will become what? Will become zero. And then what is my rho z, rho x will be? will be the negative 6z, the 2x. So just will be negative x over what? 3z here. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. Okay, so now let's take a look. Uh, and the ones here kind of, uh, uh, let's take a look at the number. So let's take a look at the number 51 here, right? Okay, so in here, the z, if it's f of x plus y, so then I know the rho z rho x, right? Will just be, you take the derivative of the whole functions, right? Then it depends on what type of the function, then you need to chain rule inside. The chain rule, because you take the derivative for x, so it's what is one plus zero, right? So this will be f prime x plus y, okay? And then, so for here, it's the same thing here. So if you want to do low z, low x here, right? So then you need to have the derivative of x, y, then times what your chain rule inside will be y here, okay? So that's the, that's the province here. Now let's take a look. The next problem, all this other like the double derivative, you just need to be careful. You just continue to take the derivative. And uh, I like to do the concept of problems here. So like uh, in here, like number 74 so here, right? And uh, so for the number 74, Okay, so let's put this is a little bit bigger, right? And then now have some space here. Okay, so now we want to see, so I really like this type of problem because it's kind of like a test your concept, right? Okay, so here, let's see if we'll be able to get it or not, all right? So f of x, that means the rate of x changes, right? That means the change from here to here and uh, from here to here. 
So you see the x what? It's x get bigger and the bigger. And uh, so like from here to here, this is uh, negative two, negative two, right? So they decrease negative two, decrease negative two. But then they divide by bigger numbers, right? So this is bigger. So the, when they move to the x direction, they divide, so it's a negative number divided by bigger number. So what's that mean? That means that the negative getting, so you will get a bigger and a bigger, right? So I know the f of x, the rate of change is what? The rate of the change for the f of x is what? It's a positive, right? All right, so the, Okay, so the, this one's here is the f of the x is here. So you change here from the uh, negative 2 to the 4 to the 6, 2 to the 4, right? Okay, so here, sorry, sorry for that. I got a, I guess I got a confused by the fxx here. I'm jumping to the next ones here. So the f of x, right? So for the f of x, so if we fix the y, then we know that f of x is going down, right? So that means we know if it's going down, just like in the, you know, like in the calculus one, we know if a function is, you know, we know in the calculus one, if a function is decreasing. So if a function is decreasing see here, then what happens here, then the derivative will be what, will be negative. So like in here, I know the, this is a level curve. So level curve going to getting smaller and smaller. So that's why this will be negative, right? And then the f of y, so that means you go to the y direction. So here's a and the tenths, right? So that means you go the, so you go this direction, your function value is increasing. So if a function value increasing, just like in the calculus one, we know if a function is a positive, you know, if increasing, then the slope is a positive, right? Okay, so now here, this is what I talk about, is f of xx, see? So the f of xx, right? So if you take a look at the f of xx, that's really is what? That is the rate of the change of the f of x, right? So now let's see how fast the rate of change. I know, you know, from here we, we drop two, right? We drop two here, okay? So we drop two, we drop two. But then the distance like in here, we drop two, right? So, but the distance here is what? So the, this is, we drop negative two, negative two, negative two. But the distance getting bigger. So for example, right? So if this is like a, like, a, like a one, and the, this distance is two, and let's say this distance is four, right? So as you can see, you know, because this level curve spaces out, so what happens here, so negative two divided by one, negative two divided by two, negative two divided by four. So this, this value is, in, so it's getting bigger, right? So it's increasing, right? So the rate of the change of f of x is really is increasing. So I know what is here, this is positive, correct? Okay, so now let's take a look at f of the y's, y, y's, and then we take a look at d. I think the d is the one, the kind of the confusing one so here, right? Okay, so let's take a look at f of y, y. So the f of y, y, first we said y, like here, they increase to, they increase to, right? So the way they increase to, they increase to, they increase to. So you know, if you go to the y direction, see here, so the space getting tighter and tighter, right? So that means this one see here is what? Maybe start with a four, then they increase to two, that they, you know, the spacing decreasing to two, then decreasing to what? Like this one is like, maybe it's a four, decrease two, decrease one. So you know, what is this value? This one value is getting what? Getting bigger, right? So I know, that's why the f of y, y is equal to the rho y, f of y. So the way 
the change of the y is getting what? It's getting faster because the here is tighter, right? So this is like this, like a tighter number from the four to six, the six to eight is, then eight to 10 is a tighter number, six to eight. So what is this one here? This one is also a positive here, okay? Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, the one f of x, y. Okay, so f of x, y is here. Okay, so the f of x, y, so basically is what? If f of the row y, the f of x, right? So that means if you change on the y direction, how fast is the rate of the f of x changes here, okay? So, okay, so you see here, right? So, you know, like the, so in here, right? So you, because it's a y direction here, right? You put like, a, let's put it like some here, okay? So for the same point here, right if you go the y directions here right so you go the y directions here so the space here right okay so the so we know at the point above p and uh, so the level curve are closer together right above the p are closer like in here closer together than the point below the p here Right, because in here, if you take a look at your level curve, like kind of getting tighter, tighter, right? So that means uh, at this point and then this point, right? So above the piece, right? So here is uh, this big and this one here is only this big, see? You see here? So it's above the P, then, you know, the level curve for the X direction is closer together than the point uh, below the P. Okay, so that means, what's that means here? That means I know F decrease, F decrease more quickly. Right, so more quickly with respect to what? With respect to X, right, for Y value. Right above P. So for Y value above P. So the that's why we, you know, so when we move into the positive, so if we move into the positive Y directions here, right? So we got a, a negative increasing of the F of X. So that's why this values here is what will be the negative is here, all right? So those, the graph, I think is the more important, you know, to understand the meaning of a partial derivative because all the other problem, if you want to take the derivative, that's pretty mechanical. And I guess that's it. And uh, for the remaining problems here, and uh, for those uh, applied problem, basically is just to take the partial derivatives. It's nothing special about it, all right? Okay, so let's see, the last is for the assignment number three. Majority of the problems are very, very mechanical. I think uh, if you, you know, if you took the calculus one, you, got, you know, the, if you still remember the derivative formulas, you should have no trouble for that, all right? Okay, that's it. And uh, so the, uh, this is about this assignment and uh, hope the, the few problems I did here can help you guys and especially those graphing problems for the concept is pretty important, all right? Okay, that's it. And uh, nice to talk to you and uh, hope the, you have a good day. Okay, bye-bye.